What's going on guys? Texas Platinum is back. We know it has been a minute. Uh, the spring game or spring practice, whatever you want to call it, has come and passed. Fires and I had to sadly watch it on TV on uh, LHN. Uh, not uh, the optimal viewing experience, we will say that. Um, but we are here now to kind of recap what we saw from that spring game, as well as just other generic spring thoughts now that we're heading into the off season and kind of looking ahead to the season uh, to come, just um, thoughts, projections, and uh, all those good things. Uh, so before we hop into it, first off, forgot to mention this in the last video. Again, we've gotten uh, not a little rusty, but I uh, haven't been doing this as frequently, but please like, comment, and, subs and subscribe. Um, especially if you're new here, welcome. Um, we're hoping to kind of get back in more of a routine uh, per se, uh, and especially come the season, I'm sure we'll be, you know, doing weekly videos. Uh, but for now, going a little bit slower, um, but still providing that good content that you guys seek. And uh, it was nice seeing some positive comments in the last video, so please keep those coming. Uh, Myers, how are you doing uh, post spring game? Uh, first thoughts, I guess, just Tell me what it was like <laughs> watching the spring game. Uh, you're you're out of state right now. You're you're down in Florida um, at the moment. Uh, what was that like for you? Because uh, both you and I typically would would be at the spring game. Neither of us were able to attend this year. Um, share your experiences with uh, the good old Longhorn Network. Right. It was tough. It was my first. I was thinking it was the first spring game that I did not attend since probably like 2005 or something crazy like that. Wow. So it was weird watching it on TV and I was Man. kind of excited about it thinking that, okay, I'll actually be able to uh, get, you know, better perspective on players making plays. You know, I feel like you can kind of digest a game better on TV, Sure. but Longhorn network definitely fumbled the bag in that regard, missing like a lot of key plays that just like Lowell Galindo had to like summarize for us because we were like, uh, Longhorn Network decided to show like the Walter Conkright hype video like 10 times <laughs> during the game. So, yeah, that was super annoying. But um, I, I mean, overall, it was really good to see the players back in the uniforms. I mean, just in the game uniforms, DK, DKR was looking crispy on TV. Uh, the, the new turf looks great. The stadium seemed pretty packed. So wish I was there, but I enjoyed watching it on TV. And um, as far as like overall thoughts on the team and like um, – where the direction where we're headed under Steve Sarkeesian is uh, I would say my major, you know, team oriented takeaway is I really like how we have an identity now. Um, when we were under Tom Herman and Charlie strong, our teams were just all over the place. There was no identity. It was kind of like we're patching together a team for one week, a game plan for one week. Um, and we didn't really have a direction. Um, but with Sarkeesian, like we, we know what we are. We're going to be a team that's going to go and, uh, take the ball on the first or second drive and go and score. And we're going to keep scoring. Um, and we're going to put up 50, 60 points a game. I think we're going to be really explosive dynamic. We're going to, um, and we're going to outscore a lot of teams on the flip side, our defense is going to give up points. Um, and uh, it's not going to always be complimentary football at least yet, but I I'm kind of expecting like a 2018 OU type team. I don't know if we'll be that good offensively, but, I think we're going to be a top five offense in the country. I mean, I think that's a fair uh, thing to say based on the talent that we have, the skills positions, and uh, what we saw to Quinn Ewers and even Hudson Carr looked okay. But uh, obviously, it's all contingent on the O line. But I'm just happy that we have a identity as a team that's going to go down and, and score a lot of points. And um, I love the scheme that Sark has, and recruits took notice. And uh, I mean, with Trey Wisner and Ryan Niblett committing, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm just happy that we have a, you know, an actual vision for the program that Sark's kind of, you know, employing now. And I just hope it keeps, uh, you know, developing into the fall with Quinn Ewers at the helm. And I think, I think this could be, this could work out eventually, but I'm not trying to drink the Kool-Aid yet, but I liked what I saw at least offensively. So what do you think, Trevor? Yeah, I kind of felt similarly. I mean, what? I, I guess I didn't know what to expect from the offensive line, but I wasn't thrilled <laughs> with what I saw either. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of like, Oh, I expected a, a little bit of progress, but still kind of seems stuck in stuck in there. I, I, I was, I guess the guy that stood out to me on the O-line was Hayden Connor, um, you know, being that, 
you know, a lot of, he's gotten a lot of kind of hype over the spring. Um, so it was nice to see that that was legitimate. Um, even then, like he didn't like wow me or anything, but I was impressed that he was holding his own and almost looked like the best guy out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, just, you know, relatively impressed with, uh, I mean, our skill players, I think, are kind of the calling card for our offense. Like you said, with, uh, you know, that focus on driving home points and, and scoring in that regard. Um, but, uh, yeah, overall, nothing too negative. I mean, it is only the spring game. Um, but uh, it was nice to see Quinn finally out there throwing around the ball. I mean, he threw – and we'll touch on it more, but, I mean, he just threw that – absolute dime to Nayer, who we'll also definitely touch on in a bit. Um, and that just uh, was kind of kind of the highlight of the day, really the icing on the cake. And it's just like, dang, we haven't had, you know, a quarterback that can really throw, you know, just an absolute beauty like that. And uh, honestly, probably since Colt, I mean, I haven't seen just a dime. I mean, Casey threw some dimes last season. I got to give him some credit, but like that was just – I mean, Nayer didn't even have to, like, move his arms. It just dropped in the basket from, like, 50 yards out. So that was exciting to see. That's really all I needed to see out of Quinn. But, um, yeah, I mean, and again, like, watched it on TV, so I only got so much because of um, Longhorn Network and and their abundance of ads and (laughs) – mini documentaries and all those good things uh didn't quite get the full feel and uh yeah kind of wish wish i could have been at the game but couldn't this year so yeah those are my initial thoughts let's uh shift over to offense um since that i mean we've kind of talked about it a lot based on those initial thoughts but let's break it down start out with quarterbacks Quinn Ewers and Hudson Card, uh, kind of give me your thoughts on both of their performances. Right, we'll start with Quinn Ewers. I mean, obviously, Quinn Ewers passed the eye test, I mean, as expected on during the spring game. I mean, the Nayor pass was super impressive. But also, uh, one of the plays I liked out of Quinn was when that when he had that little out route to uh, Jatavion Sanders, and there was an edge coming right at him. And um, right under pressure, Ewers just put a nice ball. It, it wasn't a you know, a crazy pass, but it was just like a little five yard out that I feel like Casey Thompson or Hudson card last year, or even going back to Ellinger, those are the type of plays that we would just mess up. And um, the fact that Ewers was poised under pressure is kind of what I wanted to see, because that's what I was most excited about Ewers coming out of high school. And, you know, when he transferred to Texas is uh, he's really good at making tough throws on the money under pressure. And that's a gift that not many quarterbacks have. Uh, but Ewers has it, and I was glad to see him do that in the spring game. And it also is a bit, you know, tainted because the refs will blow the whistle as soon as, like, a D- DN comes within, like, two feet of the quarterback. So we couldn't really see Quinn Ewers, you know, really under pressure. But uh, in a couple of plays that – or he was under pressure, I thought he did really well. Uh, he did miss a couple passes here and there. But overall, I mean, like, in his first live game, I would say, kind of like a game uh, set- setting – I think he looks uh, fantastic as a, you know, he's still like what, 18 years old, senior in high school. So um, I think it's fair to say that he'll be our starter next year. I don't feel like that's um, like disrespectful to card or anything like that. I mean, hearts and card look good too. I mean, he throws a really pretty ball and um, his issue is he's kind of been a one read quarterback so far. Uh, when, you know, when that first read's not there, it kind of gets ugly. Uh, he'll he'll kind of um, make questionable decisions if it's, you know, if it, if uh, adversity comes up, but he is an athlete, so he can run around and uh, make things happen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I feel like Hudson card could win us some games next year, but I just feel like there's a ceiling on a Hudson card led team. I feel like if you have Quinn Ewers at the helm, I feel like there's no ceiling on what the team can do. I feel like we can, you know, outscore pretty much everybody on our schedule outside of maybe Bama, maybe Oklahoma, but yeah. Uh, overall, I was super happy with what I saw to Quinn. The interception to Anthony Cook, though, um, I wish we could have seen like the actual footage of it. There's no like real footage, like you know, know. Like, broadcast footage, because LHN was, I'm not sure what they were doing, but <laughs> yeah, that was a bad decision by Quinn Ewers. But I mean, he's a gunslinger. He's going to make those plays as a freshman. 
So, um, and yeah, I mean, we're going to definitely have a little Quinn Ewer bias. I mean, if, if Hudson Carr throws that interception, we'd be like, oh, bench him, bench him, uh, Quinn Ewer's for starter. But um, aside from that interception, which was a bad decision, I think he played great. Uh, yeah, what do you think about the quarterbacks, Trevor? Yeah, the, the interception was interesting because, you know, we were in a commercial break and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, apparently apparently Quinn just threw an interception and didn't even see it and couldn't even see it for like a little. Like you said, there's not really like a clear shot of it because they weren't, I guess, ready for it. Or I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but it's funny. It's almost like the Zapruder film or something like that where it's just like, you know. Is hidden away conspiracy. I, I I almost wanted to make a joke about how um, Longhorn Network did that on purpose to you know further their agenda of having Quinn be the starter. But uh, anyway, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, Carr didn't look bad. I really don't think he did. Um, he looked decent. I, I still want to. I still wish I saw him. You know. A little more confident in his play I still feel like he's a little timid and um maybe not timid but a little he's still figuring it out um and he's not a finished product yet or anything like that um still kind of not really setting his feet super you know well not well but like he's I just want to see him a little more intentional with uh his throws and stuff it's kind of hard to explain but you know, it's the little body language that I thought, you know, after a few more years and and more familiarity with the offense, he'd be a little more confident in his decision making. Um, but he still, I think, is learning and growing. Um, but still, I mean, like you said, threw some great balls, had a really good run for a touchdown. Um, overall, I liked what I saw. I, I just wish I saw a little more polish on him, I guess. Um and then Quinn, like I said earlier, with that <coughs> long ball uh, to Nair was really impressive. Um, some of it, some of his like you know shorter throws, I think were pretty well, you know, as well. And um, yeah, overall, he definitely kind of passed the eye test. Um, he still has a ways to go. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I would say that yeah, he's probably going to be the starter because he's not that far behind Card, and his talent, I think, is clearly you know out there at this point <laughs> and i fully expect him to start come the fall uh as early as game one but um yeah he's he's not a finalized product either so um overall good things um nothing too bad nothing too shocking that i saw um but uh yeah it's still it, you can tell it's the, it's the spring game and you know they still got a lot of time to develop and and hone their craft before fall runs comes around so not too concerned um but overall good things i wanted to i wanted to add before we transition um i love the way quinn you looked on those rpos that's what i was also excited about is quinn is yeah. so natural at taking snaps and just mm -hmm. throwing balls fast like Pulling without it no in, laces. yeah 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 yeah. i mean well just, that was his that was his offense you know for right so long he makes it look so easy, like how Peyton Manning did. It just grabs a ball and chunks it right in the money, fast, at perfect timing. I mean, it's yeah. not perfect yet, but he has the ability to make it perfect because uh, he's got a really quick release. So that was great to see as well because Ellinger, you know, Ellinger was a great quarterback for Texas, but the one issue that I hated about Ellinger was his timing was always horrendous, um, mm -hmm. like in terms of like the quick game and stuff like that. He wasn't snappy. Um, no, not at all. And Quinn <laughs> is. So that was exciting to see and Hudson's pretty good at RPOs too he just needs to um work on some other things yeah 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 I mean you saw that in the the worthy touchdown pass that was very clean you know just a clean clear decision that he just saw him open and just immediately made the decision through a dime so it's good to see um let's kind of clump together uh running backs tight ends and wide receivers, so skill position on the offensive side of the ball, um, just to kind of speed up this because we don't want to take all all the time in the world. But um, yeah, running backs. I mean, obviously, Roshan Johnson made <laughs> quite a statement um, with that big touchdown run, and I really, I really like Jonathan Brooks. Um, 
Myers, how about you go into kind of what you saw out of running backs, clumping them all together, um, how you felt um, Bijan. I think he played like a couple snaps or, or maybe he didn't even play at all. I don't know. But it, if he did play, it was very limited to like the first drive or something like that. Um, what, what do you think? I don't know if Bijan played because I wasn't there. And I think if he did play, Longhorn Network missed it. But um, let's just say he didn't play. Bijan is great. Bubble we'll wrap him. He's the best running back right. in the nation. No reason but to. behind Bijan, I mean, Roshan impressed, man. I mean, this guy, he's, he's, he's working his way into an NFL running back at this point, I think. Oh, I mean, he's not going to be like – He's he going to be a steal. Absolutely. And he's a culture guy. I mean, he's, he's, he's our biggest leader on the, on the team. And he's, he backs it up. It's not one of those guys that leads and then is just, you know, right. mediocre on the field. He's he's legit. I mean, that's a guy that, you know, game on the line, fourth and five. Honestly, like, maybe give it to Roshan over Bijan. Not, <laughs> yeah. not over Bijan, but, like, right, right. if there's a play where you can give him both the ball, give him, yeah, Wild let Roshan lead block for Bijan or something. Yeah. <laughs> Zone read with, the, yeah, with Bijan and Roshan in the Wildcat. But, yeah, Roshan looked great, man. He looked fast on that long touchdown run he's, he he's getting huge now he's separated he's built. like yeah he outran um he, he made terrence brooks look slow yeah. um and terrence brooks is a guy that i thought was pretty fast i could be wrong out of high school but yeah i didn't see that speed out of roshan earlier in his career and it's impressive because he's he looks more built now like i was saying like he looks like he's put on muscle and he's yeah. also looks faster so i mean he's he's a guy that like when it's going to be annoying for opposing defenses when, like, okay, if Bijan's coming off the field, you think you get a rest, but then we send in Roshan, who's just, like, you know, a demon, like, he's possessed out there running the ball. I mean, that's got to be tiring, uh, you know, for defenses. And then behind him, I mean, Keelan scored that touchdown. I know they didn't call it a touchdown, but he bounced that play outside, showed off his speed, and hit touchdown. the pylon. That was that was a beautiful <laughs> – yeah, I don't, I don't know what the ref was thinking. That was clearly a touchdown, but that was a beautiful play. And um, just those little things like that we haven't really seen out of – Texas players, and that's what I'm talking about, like becoming an explosive offense with Sark. Uh, we didn't have, at least under Charlie and Herman, I don't recall. I mean, maybe DJ Johnson's a guy that could do stuff like that, but that was a while ago. I mean, it's good to have Keelan, you know, is like our third string back with the ability to do that. And I'm sure we'll incorporate him like as a slot receiver and on sweeps and stuff because he needs to get a few touches a game at the very least with that kind of speed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Keelan looked great. He also looked like he's put on some muscle. A lot of these guys look way better developed than they did last season. Shout out to uh, Tory Becton and company and their uh, strength programs. And then obviously Jonathan Brooks. I mean, that guy's going to be a beast. <laughs> that's, all be that's all you're going to say. Next, next season. Not this one, but the next one. I Yeah, I see him being like a I, – I forgot who – I saw it on Twitter and I can't remember who said it, but they – Someone says something along the line, and I apologize if the person that said it happens to be watching, but someone made the comparison of him to like a Keontae Ingram. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I get that. You know, I mean, Keontae obviously had some downfalls and everything, but there's still no doubt that Keontae was a very talented back. And um, yeah, uh, but yeah, no, he, he looks good. He, he reminds me of, you know, how Keontae every once in a while would just be an absolute, like, beast. You know, Oklahoma State, I think we played him, and Keontae oh. just went off when he was, like, yeah. fully healthy in the stars line. I feel like every time we see Jonathan Brooks, it's that level. Like, he mm-hmm. just looks but it's, so good. But it's constant, there. you know, unlike Keontae. Yeah, exactly. It, I mean, it's not – I mean, he has Style-wise. a you know, it's a different sample size. But, yeah, they, they look similar the way they run. Yeah. Uh, but I think Brooks definitely has a little more speed to him a little more explosiveness, but yeah, they definitely have the same, um, same style. They look, they look similar in the uniforms and everything, but man, that guy's going to be so fun to watch. It kind of makes you not feel as bad about Bijan leaving because once Bijan has gone, it's going to be Brooks's time to, you know, be RB one. I would assume unless Ruben Owens comes in and right. I don't see Ruben Owens beating uh, Jonathan Brooks or anything like that, but yeah, mm-hmm. man, uh, running, running backs. Oh, this is probably the best running back room we've had since, Jamal Charles and uh, Ramon Taylor and Selvin yeah. Young, I yeah. think. I mean, this 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 oh, might five. be better than them, honestly. That's that's not really Ooh. a hot like. That's at least the running tag. back room, because Bijan's gonna go higher than Jamal did, I think, in the draft. But yeah, I don't know about Selvin and Roshan and Ramon, but it's up there. It's comparable, at least I feel like. Mm. But that's the only position group that's even in the same breath as 05. Well, 
No, I think our, our, our wide receiver room is even better than 05. Yeah, that's fair. Let's move over about, to that. <laughs> yeah, go, go lead us into the receivers. Well, obviously, Worthy got a few more snaps than I thought he was going to get. I thought he was going to get the Bijan treatment, and I guess not. Um, he even then he he didn't play a ton, but um, oh, who who was who who knocked him out? Was that? Oh gosh, the guy. You, you do you remember Myers, who laid the wood on Worthy? Oh. Maurice Blackwell. Blackwell, yeah, that's, that's who it was. Stud. That guy's yeah. a stud. He is a stud, but damn, don't don't do that to Worthy. Like there's <laughs> there's a small list of guys on this team that you just don't do that to. You can do that to, you know, second stringers or walk-ons. You know, blow them up all you want, but uh, not your not your star receiver. Um, but yeah, Worthy is just a freak. I mean, I I, I think I. I really do think that a uh, Blitnikoff is in his future. Um, like he just is supremely talented and, and it's just such a grinder um, real good, nice touchdown. And he, yeah, he's just so good on routes and everything. Um, just all around. Great. Uh, Nair had his coming out party, which was really nice to see because I've, I've heard so many negative things about him. I feel like in, in spring ball and maybe not negative, but just like, Oh, he's not really separating from Marcus Washington and Washington might get the, you know, starting job over Nayer and just like, you know, weird things about, you know, him having to, I guess, adjust more to, you know, Texas level versus, you know, Wyoming level of play. But um, he shut people up <laughs> after in this game. I mean, really balled out, made some great catches ran some great routes, um, notably that, you know, one long touchdown pass um, just completely smoked. Forgot who was defending him, but just outran him, you know, um, and obviously great hands and everything. Uh, he's a, I, I like his, I like his frame too. He's, he's definitely taller than Worthy and some of the other guys um, that we uh, have on our team that are more about speed than anything else. Um and he's kind of got that like big body and definitely has the speed in the hands and everything. Um, Myers, you, you, you sent out a tweet asking for comps. Um, I think I saw someone put Des Bryant and I kind of like that comp. It's, it's a little, it's a little high. And I, I'd say that Des is much better than <laughs> Nair was or will be, but um, I, I, I kind of like that comparing that style of play. I'll, I'll have to see Nair get a little more physical, I think, to make that comp. But, um, yeah, he definitely showed out. And then Whittington, of course, nice to see him healthy again. Um, a healthy Whittington, I think, is such a weapon. Um, I mean, he just, you know, runs those inside routes so well and can very easily be Quinn's security blanket um, if he needs one, <laughs> you know, because these receivers are also talented and good you know, he may not even really need a security blanket, but um, yeah, Whittington, it was nice to see him. Um, I think he would definitely be a, you know, maybe not our top receiver next season, but if he can just stay healthy and finish a season completely without having to miss a bunch of games, um, yeah, I think he can, you know, really make an impact on our team. And then Marcus Washington, you know, he showed up, had a really good catch. Um, catch and run, um, kind of, uh, I was curious if Madrid <laughs> wish he was here tonight, but curious if Madrid got excited whenever he did that big catch and run where he just kind of bounced off of a tackle and ran the other way and gained some yards. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's definitely going to be in our rotation without a doubt. Apparently he's really improved his hands in the spring practices, um, which is good to see. Um, but just such a great blocker and route runner and kind of a culture guy too, from what I've heard. So, um, all in all, just real good, real good receiver room. And that's without touching on a Jai Hall, who's going to be in, you know, starting in June and we'll kind of touch on him at the end of the video. Um, but yeah, and then I guess I'll just throw in real quick tight ends. Um, Jatavian Sanders looked like a beast, had some good catches, ran some great routes. 
uh, really a physical specimen. I mean, it was unfortunate to see him fumble that ball, <laughs> you know, going up to the goal line that that was not good and something that I'm sure he got his ear chewed out for. He just, you can't do that. It kind of reminded me of um, a few years ago. I think it was like, was it Tyron Swoops? Something? No, no, no. It was Deontay Foreman. He was running against Tech and like got to the goal line and then someone stripped it out and just took it the other way. This was like 2016, 17. Anyway, um, no, 2016. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of that, but um, yeah, he's got to improve that ball security. I'm, I'm sure he will, but um, yeah, he's going to be a real weapon for us for sure. Myers, your thoughts on receivers, tight ends? Man, I love our receivers. Isaiah Nayor, they were saying out of, you know, inside Texas and them were saying like, there's a chance that Isaiah Nayor is our best receiver on the team, period. Like hmm. better than Xavier Worthy. And I was like, there's no way. Yeah. But when uh, I, don't, I think Hudson that. Card, Hudson Card threw that first pass to Isaiah Nayor. And it was just like a little dig route in the outside, like five, 10 yard dig. And, uh, <laughs> He just grabbed that ball, made a cut, and took off. Like I was like, "Oh my god, we have I've not seen a Texas receiver do that." I mean, outside of Worthy, and like ever, honestly, uh, Shipley wouldn't do stuff like that. I was like, "Oh my god, that guy just that guy's an athletic freak, yeah. and he's a technician too. His routes are crispy, uh, man." And the best thing about it is, he was acting like a possession receiver most of the game. We were just hitting him on little, you know, dinkers outside of the uh, touchdown play. Uh, but what his calling card at Wyoming was like mossing people. We didn't even get right. to see him go up and make right. plays on the ball in coverage. That's where he's, that's where he made his money at Wyoming. So once, so we still have that, to, you know, to get out of him. I'm sure we'll see more of that in the fall, but man, he was so impressive. I mean, he's got the size and the speed. That's an NFL player. Um, so I'm just happy to, that we flipped him from Tennessee because that's just going to open up everything because I mean, you got to pick one him or worthy. And then if you're going to, you know, defend the pass, then you got Bijan or Roshan coming at you. So, man, that really helps us out. And then also Whittington. I mean, Whittington looks so good when he's healthy. He looks like an NFL player. I mean, that dude looks iconic. I, he just needs to stay healthy, and um, he's a really reliable receiver for us. He's just a guy that I feel like Quinn Ewers or Hudson Card will be comfortable with, you know, and on fourth down going to, you know, fourth and long or fourth and ten, you know, uh, on a must-get play. I think you got to draw something for Whittington. Um, maybe before worthy or something like that, because that's just a veteran who you can trust if he's healthy. So it's happy to see him healthy and glad he's not hurt after spring, you know, just hopefully he takes care of his body this off season. And then I'm so happy to see Casey Kane uh, because we've heard good things about him all spring, but I'm sure we'll see more, but uh, overall, I was super happy with the room. Julio Billingsley at tight end looked pretty good. I mean, he got a couple targets and he, I mean, he didn't have any drops or anything bad. He just kind of, play with them in the role that that he was assigned that that day and he looked he looked good i'm sure we'll get him involved more in the fall but man i'm really happy with all our position uh skill position guys and our tight ends um it's nice to see you know jutavion in there taking that you know that crossing route down the middle of that post <laughs> i just can't imagine Kate brewer ever doing that so <laughs> it's good to see uh you know the five star finally getting some run and um Hopefully, man, it's just a sign of things to come. This offense is going to be electric. We just got to make sure the O-line is patched up. And I will say, Marcus Washington, um, he did have a couple bad drops. And um, he needs to watch out because I think Matt Madrid, I think he's thinking about, you know, selling his stock on Marcus Washington <laughs> and buying, buying some Ajay Hall uh, stock <laughs> because he's been hyping up Ajay Hall in the Texas Platinum Group Tech. So um, <laughs> Ajay Hall should be here in a couple, in a couple weeks or months. And um, Marcus Washington is going to have some competition for uh, Matt Madrid's favorite wide receiver. So, and also <laughs> he's going to have some competition on the field because Ajay Hall is an athletic beast. So if you throw in Ajay Hall and he's actually, you know, up to its potential, it's going to be absolutely disgusting what we have on offense. So very yeah. excited about, you know, the upside of this offense. Absolutely. Let's round it out then with a uh, offensive line. I already kind of touched on my thoughts, so I'm not going to, say too much more Myers do you have any additional thoughts about the line outside of fading Connor looking good and everyone else kind of unimpressive <laughs> for, for a lack of a different word 
So I do like Cole Hudson. Um, he got a lot of run this, this okay. whole spring, yeah. honestly, just because of depth. And he's yeah. a true freshman. So I guess that's a good sign because he's the only freshman that, that came in early, which sucks. Right. It's too bad we don't have these, these you know, these Banks and Campbell here. But I thought he'd looked really good, and that's a great sign. If, if he's looking good, that was one of our lower-ranked O-linemen that we signed. So um, good eval, I would say, by Kyle Flood. Obviously a long way to go, but I thought he looked good. I mean – I, I honestly didn't watch the O-line that much. I didn't key in on him as much as I should have, but the, the tackles still have issues, man. Our edges look good against our tackles, and that's a problem because our edges are not good um, unless they miraculously improved. So, I mean, although I will say – actually, I'll say it for the defense, but yeah. offensive line, I mean, it's zero-sum. I really – I'm not a, the brightest football line. I can't really tell you how the O-line is going to be in the fall. It's just we'll wait and see. Hopefully these – these uh, freshmen get it here fast. That's all I'll say. Kristen Jones did look solid from what I could tell, though. So I'll give him that. But uh, he's going against Jet Bush. Just wait till he's going right. against Will Anderson and Dallas Turner in a couple in a couple oh, months. God. Yeah, <laughs> that's not going to be good. And I will say our our our, our edges have improved. But um, yeah, let's let's transition, I guess, over to defense. Uh, I'll start with D line and edges. Um, Clearly, Justin Justice Finkley has made an impression on you, Myers. Uh, talk a little bit about him and uh, Baron Sorrell, who seems to really be, you know, catching some attention as well. Both of them, young edge guys. Um, and then, if we could also touch a little bit on the actual line itself. I'll be honest. Out of high school, out of high school, I was not that high on Justice Finkley. I just thought he was kind of, you know, just he didn't have anything that he excelled at that much i thought it was kind of just like bland and like he didn't have he wasn't super fast wasn't super huge wasn't but after seeing him like in the spring game i mean first of all i put out a tweet saying he looks just like sergio kindle and he does like i mean and sergio <laughs> kindle was one of the most like intimidating looking defensive ends we've had in a while and uh justice finkley definitely looks different we don't really have players like that anymore like we did under mac you know like when iraq poe and sergio kindle or even roy miller uh, would walk around and be like, oh, man, like, look at these guys. These are grown men. We don't really have that. I mean, Byron Murphy is an exception. He's a grown man. But Justice Finkley is a grown man, and he's like 12 years old. So uh, the <laughs> fact that he um, the fact that he was in there, like, you know, looking the part, and also he was making plays. I mean, he's physical. Uh, he was getting penetration. And um, like I said, he's 18 or 17, whatever he is. So that was super exciting to see. I like how they gave him number one to wear. He looks yeah, – it, it looks – I mean, if, if you're going to give a defensive end number one, you better be good. Um, right. And I know Shiro Davis used to wear number one, but uh, he didn't he didn't live up to the hype as, as a number one defensive end should do. So hopefully Justice Finkley does. But um, uh, similar to Cole Hudson, I think it's a really good sign because um, I was higher on Jamon Tapp um, and some other of the, of the defensive ends we're bringing in. Uh, but Justice Finkley looks really good. Um, so that, if it's a sign – uh, you know, this D-line class was stacked. This is a sign of things to come, and I think it's a great sign. So, yeah, man. And then, obviously, Baron Sorrell, he actually is, I think, a really good player for us. He's – if you go back and watch the game, he's in on pretty much every play. I mean, yeah. he's not necessarily hitting people or making tackles, but he's penetrating on every play. Um, he's disrupting, and he's physical, and he, he just has a really good motor. And also, he's put on some muscle. He looks built, although he does need to get a smaller uniform. His jersey is way too baggy on him. <laughs> but uh, aside from that, I mean, those those are the two ends that I was actually really happy with. Um, Jet Bush and all the other guys. I know Jet Bush kind of played linebacker now, but the other ends, I mean, like Ovia Gofu apparently played well. I didn't notice him. Um, uh, but, he he yeah. kind of stood out to me. I saw I saw him a handful of times. Okay. He got, well, he got home. He got home at least tw- once or twice. Right. Well, that's good. Um, yeah, because he's probably going to play a lot for us next year. But then also on the interior of the line, Byron Murphy, whenever he goes in, it's he's fun to watch, man. That guy, um, that guy is a, you know, he's a unit. He's he's in a he's not going to get pushed around at all. So even against Bama, that's a guy that I trust, you know, go out and cause problems. He's just that type of player. It's just amazing that he's only a three star out of high school. Uh, and Alfred Collins, I thought uh, looked good. I mean, it's annoying with Alfred Collins because the upside is so astronomical. And the fact that he hasn't just like become a superstar yet is annoying, yeah. but we got to keep in mind, he's only like going to be a what sophomore. He's, he's not that old. He's class of 2020 redshirt sophomore, maybe. Yeah. 
Yeah, retro uh, I don't sophomore. know. Actually, maybe he's not. Maybe he's not that young. Or true but junior. Either way, one of the two. Yeah, maybe a true junior. But yeah, he needs to start taking off soon. But um, I thought he looked pretty good. And uh, and some. I mean, he, he was at least going 100. percent You could see that he was. He was. There was no lack of effort out there, so that's good. But uh, what do you think about the line, Trevor? Yeah, very much like you said. Good, good. Felt good about it. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's it's hard to judge because again, I our offensive line is just bad, and we kind of fell for that last year when we were like, oh, we have a top ten D line in the country, and sure enough, it's just no, our offensive line is absolute trash, and our D line as a result is like mediocre at best. Um, so I'm I'm pretty weary about about it, but I mean, I I do you know, in some of those more talented positions on the defensive line, or at least ones that feature talent a little bit more. I, I, I Let me rephrase that. I think we have a lot more talent on the line in general this year than last year uh, with people that are able to make big plays rather than just kind of guys. Because <laughs> that's what it seemed like last year uh, was more of like just bodies now I feel like we actually got some players still not, still not perfect, still, you know, ways to go, but um, I see a difference already, uh, which is, which is good because, you know, that's such a big part of our defensive scheme. Um, and then of course, if we add in O'Shawn Mathis, that's a whole nother, whole nother story and a whole nother component to the defense that'll really, uh, I think kind of unlock, you know, what can be a good defense for Texas. Um, let's go over to linebackers. Um, Myers, what are your thoughts? <laughs> so I like Jalen Ford a lot outside yeah. of Jalen Ford and obviously to Marvion, he didn't play much. Uh, we definitely need, I think, a transfer linebacker. I mean, yeah, that, that's the pressing issue, I feel like. I just don't trust Devin Richardson and the I mean Benda looked not horrible. Benda's yeah. a guy that I, I feel comfortable if he's like our third guy, I guess. But ideally you want a better third option. Um you want to have like at least three like surefire uh players for you at linebacker. And I think we have two with uh Jalen Ford. I, I mean Jalen Ford's filling out as well. He looks really he looks intimidating in his uniform. DeMarvion's obviously an athletic specimen. Um Overshone did look bigger, uh, you know, in pregame and stuff like that. Like he's put on some weight and everybody's talking about that. And he's going to be a problem for us, which is good. But man, I just, man, if we were able to get a, you know, a game changer linebacker um, out of the portal and then add an O'Shawn Mathis, hopefully, and then maybe another good safety, this defense would be really good. Those are our biggest holes, man. Um, and I don't know if Travell Johnson is going to be, be that for us as a freshman, although, um, no. I think he will be good eventually, but that guy is not, he's not going to come in and save us. I mean, it's a three, that's, he's not that kind of player yet. So I don't know. What do you think about the linebackers? I was, that's Jet Bush is playing linebacker now. Luke Brockermeyer was obviously injured, but Luke Brockermeyer has his limitations. I mean, he's, he can't go sideline to sideline. He doesn't have that kind of speed. So we need to definitely find some solutions there quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jalen Ford, I thought looked good and kind of matched some of the reports that I've been hearing about him, uh, which is all, which is all positive. Um, but yeah, I, I think we need to add, <laughs> add some depth uh, to that position. Cause um, you know, yeah. You, you, if you have overshone and Ford in there, I feel pretty good about it, but it's, it's about depth at that position. I feel like, you know, it's, it's such a difficult position to play that takes so much energy and stamina that um, you got to rotate guys. And uh, even if, you know, if you have two really good guys, that's great. But the second you rot rotate them, you know, if there's a liability at hand, which there will be, <laughs> unless we really improve or get some new guys, um, that'll be an issue. So yeah, kind of my thoughts. Uh, 
they didn't really overwhelm me to be honest. Uh, but I, I guess I wasn't really expecting them to either, but yeah. Uh, let's kind of wrap up defense with a uh, secondary over thoughts on that. I mean, the shark came to play. I will say that Jameson, even though, you know, I've, I've been hearing that, you know, he very well might, you know, people are coming for, for his job. Um, he did show up and, uh, you know, made some plays. I feel like, um, Anthony Cook got an interception off of Quinn, which is good. I mean, Cook Cook's going to be a solid player for us. Um, other players that you saw, Myers, that really stood out? Some of our new guys, I feel like, kind of flashed. Yeah, two players. I mean, Keaton Crawford and Maurice Blackwell, uh, both are guys that uh, they are super physical. I mean, Keaton Crawford in particular, the way he – the way he's how fast he moves um that's the type of talent we really haven't had in a while at db and i'm glad that gary patterson and all them have decided that he'd be better off at safety kind of give him you know more free range to go out and come down and make hits and stuff like that um, that's a player i think that needs to be starting in one of our safeties um, i don't know which one he fits in better at. and also maurice blackwell uh, he's a guy that also moved to safety um i believe he needs to get a new number 37 at safety he looks Looks bad, but um, <laughs> man, that guy is super physical. I mean, there was one play when uh, we threw like a little out route or a little, you know, a little safety route to uh, Julio Billingsley, and I thought it was number five. It looked like Bijan, and then Maurice Blackwell comes in and like throws him to the ground, and his helmet flies off. And I was like, Maurice Blackwell did not just throw Bijan Robertson to the ground and throw his helmet off, but it was Billingsley. But still, that's just uh, it seemed like every play, like he's running around with the, running around with his pants on fire. And um, that's kind of what you saw out of him in, in high school. If you go back and watch this film, and that's the guy that um, the recruiting, you know, my friend that was on the recruiting team back in the, uh, back in the Herman era, or I don't know if it was Herman or not. Yeah, it was definitely Herman. Um, they were super high on Maurice Blackwell. Like they're like, this guy's going to be a player. And um, he, he wasn't ranked that high, but man, you can see it. He's got the glimpses. And I, I thought he played well against Kansas last year too. I remember him making some plays against Kansas vividly for some reason. Um, and he's only a true freshman last year. So uh, that's a guy that you really like to see uh, his development so far. And I think he needs to be on the field in some capacity. Uh, today, Barron's a guy that people have been hyping up. I did not notice him whatsoever. Um, and that's kind of my fault for not really watching the film thoroughly. But I mean, um, apparently he played very well. And he, I mean, that's kind of a, you don't want that much attention as a, as a DB, obviously. Right. Um, so it's kind of, you know, it's there's a balance there you have to keep in mind and then ryan watts i mean that guy looks the part i mean he's huge that guy's at least this guy's a legit 6'3 and um he looks very athletic he plays the ball very well for his size um it's hard not to envision him playing next year a lot so i don't know how it's going to shake out in terms of you know starting a lineup but i think there are some pieces there obviously the depth isn't there yet i mean terrence brooks uh, he definitely, you know, he got baptized by fire a little bit on um, at the, during the spring game. He got <laughs> he, on that Roshan Johnson run. That was emblematic of, you know, the Manny Diaz BYU defense. So don't ever want to see that again. But, I mean, he did make some plays in the end zone. I mean, he had a good pass breakup in the end zone. But, but I believe Terrence Brooks is actually like 16 or 15 years old, something ridiculous like that. I, I read that somewhere, that he's like the youngest player on the team by far, kind of like how Moro Ojima was a few years back. Um, so he'll, he'll get it there. I mean, th this dude is literally a child out there playing against, you know, Isaiah and Nao and Worthy and guys like that. So um, excited to see what Terrence Brooks can do. It's good to see him getting experience early in the spring because that's the guy that was one of our highest ranked recruits, one of our best TVs. Uh, BJ Allen got in a little bit. Uh, that was good to see. Um, and that's a guy that we might need next year, just based on our lack of depth in the safety room. But overall, I mean, obviously, I'm not that enthusiastic about our secondary, but I do feel like it could be worse, I guess. Um, would like to see us take a safety there, like I said, uh, and, and uh, as a grad transfer or a portal candidate. But, um, yeah, I would just say kind of similar to our linebacker room. It's just there are some pieces there, but you want to see a lot more. Agreed. <laughs> Sorry. Got a little cough, so I'm going to keep muting myself. Um, let's finish off then 
with special teams. Not not super special. <laughs> um, not bad either. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't think it was awful outside of that one kick at the end uh, that Auburn missed. Um, I will say that our punter, Isaac Pearson, I think he looks good. I mean, I know a lot of people are a little concerned with uh, consistency, um, which may be a relevant concern, but when he hits it, uh, the guy seems to have a pretty big leg. Um, yeah, and then for Auburn, I don't even know if he'll be our starting kicker, you know, once Will Stone, you know, comes in the fall. Well, no, wait, isn't Will Stone already on campus? I thought I, thought I was going to see... I'm confused. Uh, do you know Myers, the kicking situation? I don't think he is because if he is, he would have he would have seen him. Right. I feel like Saturday. I don't think he played unless I completely missed it. So yeah, I no, think he'll he be in the fall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure those two will compete. I mean, Auburn. Yeah, played a few snaps last season. Even I know in like the Rice game for whatever reason. Uh, so I. I mean, he seemed serviceable. He looked good up until that last kick, which was just awful. <laughs> um, but, yeah, M- Myers, do you have any thoughts on special teams? Um, not really, honestly. I, uh, I just thought Bert Auburn looked fine. I mean, he made, like, two of his three kicks. One was pretty decently far away, and then he missed the last one. Um, but, yeah, that's, just, that's a walk-on. Um, and sometimes walk-on kickers are really it, but I think – Will still needs to be that guy for us in the fall. Um, as far as punting, I didn't really notice anything horrible about Isaac Pearson's punting. I think it's fine. I don't think we're going to punt that much on offense. I think we're going to score a lot. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, obviously you wish you had Cameron Dicker or uh, Hunter Lawrence or Dusty Mangum, someone like that, Justin Tucker, obviously. But, I mean, hopefully Will Stone can be that for us. Bert Auburn, let's not write him off yet either. I mean, he did solid. So um, I'm not going to freak out about the kicker and uh, – and uh, April, I think we'll be okay there. But <laughs> I mean, obviously, there's room for improvement. Awesome. Uh, I guess any final thoughts as we wrap up spring ball and look to the future? Uh, just back to the points, man. We need to get um, a couple transfers, you know, a couple more. There's a couple holes that are glaring on our team, specifically on defense, that I feel like if you patch those up, this team could be really good. Um, obviously start off with the edge, O'Shawn Mathis. Um, we need to make sure we sign O'Shawn Mathis. We cannot lose O'Shawn Mathis to Nebraska <laughs> for NIL reasons. That's oh, basically God. our administration, our boosters, our coaches um, saying we're choosing to be bad at football. We're just accepting being bad at football if we don't go out and purchase O'Shawn Mathis through NIL. That guy is so needed for us. He's a Texan. We cannot let this guy go to Nebraska. Um, and then I also heard he's down the street. I mean, he's he's literally hanging out in Manor yeah. right now. Like he, he hasn't even been on TCU's campus. So he's just chilling out like right down the road. Right. <laughs> it's ridiculous. No excuse for that. No, yeah. Absolutely no excuse. So I'm going to assume we get him. If we don't get him, I might freak out. On, <laughs> I might go on. A, I might, you know, tweet some things on Saturday, but. <laughs> I expect our staff to make it happen. So hopefully yeah. we get Oshawa Mathis. That'll be huge for us. You know, just kind of help solidify us on the edge because we have young talent there that is flashing, but we don't have like a proven commodity. And Oshawa Mathis is the top proven commodity out there available in the portal. It's a match made in heaven. So we need to make sure we close that out. Linebacker, it sucks that we missed out on Caleb uh, Johnson because I actually liked him a lot. His film and his his stats at, at UCLA, like his, his uh, production was actually pretty phenomenal. So it sucks that he went to Miami, but I'm sure other ones will enter the portal, um, you know, between now and, and fall ball. So uh, hopefully we find one that fits us and can help our, you know, add some depth and some talent to that room and then obviously safety. But let's just say we factor in, we just get Oshan Mathis and two other stud uh, defensive transfers. So I think we have three spots left. Um, I really like where this team's at. I mean, I know we went five and seven. I know we lost to Kansas and uh, we suck until we don't. However, if you add in a couple transfers, this is a completely different team, a completely different team than, than we had last season, which is refreshing because there was a lot of cancers on the team last year. A lot of just culture guys that not, I mean, not culture guys, I should say. And it just wasn't really a great team. Obviously we lost to Kansas, but 
I think we're doing Stark's doing his best, you know, absolutely reform the roster, bring in more talent, way more talent and more explosiveness. And um, I think we're kind of moving in, in the direction that Stark wants us actually uh, to be, which is exciting. Um, so, I mean, not drinking the Kool-Aid, I will say um, I still have us at eight and four coming out of spring for next year, um, losing to Bama, Oklahoma, and uh, I don't know the other two yet, but yeah, I, I still think we're eight and fourteen. But I think we're going to be a very impressive eight and fourteen as of now. It's going to be it's going to be a team that feels a lot better than eight and four. That's how I that's how I see it going. Uh, Trevor, what are your post spring thoughts and your you know your spring just you know just record guess if you had to just throw out a guess right now in April? Yeah, I I very much agree. I I yeah, I was also thinking eight and four. God, I really don't want to say seven and five. Yeah, eight and four feels feels right. Um, maybe nine and three if if we catch some steam. Um, because yeah, that'll be that'll be the test. Is you know, I I think we'll do well. You know, at the beginning of the season, outside of Alabama, um, it'd be nice to see us compete with them. I just our line play, I don't think is, is we got, we got the skilled players to compete, compete, not, not beat, but compete with Bama, I think, but our trench, you know, our trenches are just going to completely get annihilated, I think. Um, so I, I don't think we'll win that game. Uh, I'm curious to see if we'll be able to make it close, but, um, and I'm sure we'll, We'll talk. We'll talk about this game a lot more going into it because, uh, yeah, it's one of the more hyped up games at the beginning of the season. Um, but after that point, I mean, yeah, the Big Twelve is you know kind of a kind of a question mark. Not really sure what to think about a lot of teams. Um, a lot of turnover. Uh, you know, Oklahoma, Iowa State. Not even sure what to really think about either of them. I think Oklahoma will still be talented. I know a lot of people like to dunk on them, but I don't think they're going to be a bad team by any stretch. Um, I think that Baylor is going to have a very solid team again and Oklahoma state, you know, I think we'll kind of continue whatever they have built. <coughs> they're not losing a ton. Um, I mean, they're losing, they lost some players, but not a ton of players. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I see like eight and four, I think, Ceiling of nine and three floor of, <laughs> I don't even want to give a floor just because we just came off of five and seven, but hopefully a floor of seven and five. Um, but again, seven and five just sounds so awful. I don't even want to mention that, but yeah, eight and four, I'm kind of feeling because um, like I said, this team, this team, I think has a lot of skill, a lot of talent, um, but I think it's still a good year away from like really taking off. And you're really going to have to upgrade um, on the offensive line in particular uh, to really get a good product out there <coughs> that I think can, you know, truly compete for, well, win, maybe not compete, but win a big 12 title. Um, because I, we, we have more than enough talent to probably be able to get to the big 12 title. I don't know if we'd be able to win it. Um but we'll see. But yeah, I think we're much in the same boat. I'll say this. Um, we're going to the SEC, not this season, but the next season it's looking like, right? And hopefully. If you look, if you look in DKR, if you look a bit at the uh, at the rafters, Big 12 champions, we only have three of them. Big 12 yeah, champions. It's bad. That's embarrassing. We need to get a fourth one on our way out of here just to make it look worth having up there. Because if we if we leave the Big Twelve and only have three Big Twelve titles up there on the Raptors, might as well just take that whole thing down. And it's not going to get any <laughs> easier winning conference championships in the SEC. We had so many Southwestern Conference championships, and it's been ten years since we won a Big Twelve title. And um, the Big Twelve is wide open, but it was last year too. So um, I'm not I like I'm not saying we're a Big Twelve championship team or anything like that, but I would like us to at least become one. <laughs> so I feel like we need to hopefully challenge for one well, with Quinn Ewers. I mean, this team could be a lot different than last year, as I was saying, it's a lot of turnover. So hopefully there's some urgency there to get big 12 title on our way out. 
And I will say this. I'll end this with a hot take. Um, I think Texas will have a Heisman finalist in New York next year. I mean, it's kind of – I feel like that's a pretty safe thing to say. Um, mm, yeah. Not even that hot of a take. Just when you look at the sheer star power of Xavier Worthy, B. John Robinson, and Quinn Ewers, obviously he's going to put up a lot of numbers. Yeah, yeah in this, I agree. system with his weapons. It's going to be – not like 2020 Bama level, but it's going to be, I guess, kind of like the light version of that, I, I would say. Like, you know, the off version of that, where we just have, like, a lot of numbers and a lot of talent. And um, obviously, to be in, you know, to go to New York for the Heisman, you have to uh, be on a good team. So, obviously, it's contingent on us also having a decent year, you know, eight or nine wins plus. But I think one of, the th- one of our big three will be there, uh, without a doubt, when it comes to – when it comes to December next year. I like, I like, I like that. (laughs) I think that's a good note to end it on. Um, Well, thank you guys for watching all the way through. If you've gotten this far, I feel like this has been a pretty long video, but I think it's been very informative. Um, We had a lot to cover, obviously, since we haven't been doing this as frequently. Um, So I'm glad that we were able to, you know, really hammer out the details and, really get through what we saw out of spring ball and um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it please leave your comments your thoughts let us know if you agree or disagree with some of the sentiments that we gave um and feel free to make all the uh (laughs) longhorn network jokes that you want in the comments uh we will much be enticed by them um yeah myers any any final thoughts are we good to close this baby out yeah, give us some uh, – in the comments, give us some, like, ideas for creative off-season videos because that's kind of our calling card. We get we make fun off-season videos, and hopefully we'll have some out soon that are just kind of, you know, off the wall, stuff that you wouldn't really expect. Um, we have some in mind, but if you have any, you know, cool videos that are, you know, Texas spe- or college football-specific, just uh, let us know, and we'll try to make something happen. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I know we've been less active. We've just been a little busy recently, but – uh, we'll try to start kicking into gear as we get closer to the season. I checked this morning. I think it's 122 days till week zero. So we're almost, we're getting close-ish. Once we get to double-digit days, that's when it really starts, you know, sure. getting close and starting to feel real. So yeah, once we get to, ways. yeah, we got, we got some time, but we're, we're, uh, we're, we're chugging along right now. So uh, thanks for watching guys. We appreciate it. Yeah. We're, we're still waiting on that uniform update. <laughs> we we're just, eagerly counting down the days and trying to see Uh, well i'm sure i'm sure we'll we'll do a once the new uniforms are revealed if they are revealed i don't know you know we keep hearing things but you know hopefully hopefully that happens finally this season and once they are you you bet that there'll be another another video analyzing them and all that good stuff so we're just eagerly awaiting that just as much as the actual season itself so anyways Thank y'all for watching. Y'all take care. Take it easy. And hook them. <laughs> <laughs>